Welcome back to another tutorial. This one is a little bit different because we're going to be talking about delivering our all important, very fragile cakes. I am in the studio today and there is a main road outside so it might be a little bit noisy. So I apologize in advance. But I get asked the same question every single time somebody sees me deliver a cake in one of the vlogs. As you know, tutorials go up each Tuesday and then I have behind the scenes vlogs that go up every other Thursday. And that's where you'll see the behind the scenes of me usually delivering to venues, setting up, how I'm making the cakes and all the life that goes on in between. And the top comment I always get is, how on earth do you deliver cakes on your knee? Yep, that is how I deliver every single wedding cake. It doesn't matter how big it is. It goes on my knee, in the car, five hour journeys. And I wanted to explain why, because I get the question all the time. I'm not here to change the way that you deliver cakes. If you find the way that you do it works for you, don't change a thing. This is definitely not for everybody, but I just wanted to come on and explain how I do it and why I do it. And hopefully if there's anybody out there who's struggling, might find my way works for them. Um, firstly, the number one thing you will see most cake makers will tell you is you either put it in the footwell or the boot. Them are the two places that your cake maker is going to tell you to put the cake. Now, I already have a major issue with one of those, and that is none of my cakes will ever fit in the footwell. So this is all right if you are buying a single tier, you are still using those thin cake boxes, like I call them the flimsy cake boxes. They're like, they're just no use, no ornament. <laughs> um, because they're just so flimsy and wavy, I don't see that protecting the cake in any way. Now those are usually smaller, single tiers are also smaller, and it helps if you were using a smaller board. Everything makes that cake box and that cake smaller and they will usually fit in the footwell unless you have cakes like mine or boxes like mine. Here I've made up my smallest cake box. These are usually 13 inch because most of my boards that my cakes go on are anywhere between 11 and 13 inch because I do like to put some decoration on the board usually as well. So it's not going to be much smaller than a 13 inch square base. I also add a little bit of height to that box because sometimes I'll have figures sat on top of those cakes and I also want those to be protected. Now, car footwells come in all different shapes and sizes depending on the model of the car. We have an estate car, so this has usually got a, a quite roomy footwell. But the number one problem we always run into is the glove box and the chair runners. So the glove box usually pokes out too far and comes out on a big curve. That's problem number one. And problem number two is the runners of the seats. So those are the metal runners where you move your chair forward and back. In this car, I have pushed the, the seat far back as it will go. And you'll notice the runner is kind of sat on a raised area of the car as well. So sometimes the floor goes up into a raised area. Like I said, some cars do have really good footwells and others just don't. Um, and I can count on one hand over the last 10 years how many of my cake boxes have actually fit in somebody's footwell. <laughs> Literally on one hand. I just prefer these cake boxes. I find that they keep the cake a lot safer from knocks and they don't bend. So if somebody's carrying it and they kind of push it too hard, they end up pushing the box into the decoration, whereas these boxes are much more rigid. Problem with that is they do not bend well around the glove boxes. So as you can see, I am trying to force this box into the footwell. And again, just to remind you, this is my smallest box. I have boxes much bigger than this. And the only way it's going in is if we tilt it at an angle to put it in. Now, I don't know about you, but just looking at this angle with no cake in that box is giving me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> um, I'm not wanting to tip my cake up to that extent just to get it into the footwell. Now it does eventually go in, it will slide in and it will sit in there flat, but you are exposing your cake to that level of tilt going in and also coming back out. There is no other way I can get that box in without tilting it. So. That is the number one reason I don't use or recommend the footwell is because it just never fits. 
Now onto the boot. The boot is where most people like to put the cakes. Boots are usually nice and flat, again, depending on the car. And the only reason I don't use the boot is because of my personal track record. So I have delivered cakes on my knee since day one. And the one time, one time I decided to put the cake, the fully decorated cake in the boot because it was a four hour drive and I thought, this is gonna be really heavy for four hours. I'll pop it and I'll just try it out in the boot. Everybody says to put it in the boot, I'll just try it out. And that one time I tried it, that one time I pulled the cake out of the boot and it had stress cracks in the icing. So what those are is I could see around the bottom couple of tiers where we'd hit potholes or the car had juddered the cake had kind of done the same thing in the boot and there were stress cracks in the sugar paste. It hadn't fallen to pieces, it was still fine, but the point is, I didn't want the cracks in the cake, I didn't design it with cracks in the cake, therefore, that one time I put it in the boot, that one time I got stress cracks, and all the other times I've placed it on my knee, it's arrived in perfect condition. So, purely because of my own track record, I don't want to put them in the boot if I know that that's a possibility that's going to happen. I'm going to get cracks in it. Now, one thing I'm going to get is a massive stream of comments under this video saying, well, I deliver them in the footwell and I deliver in the boot and they always arrive fine and they're, it's perfect. I get that. I'm not trying to persuade you to do it in any other way. You carry on doing you. That's brilliant if, it, if, if you can do that and it works out well for you. I'm only explaining how I do it and why I do it and if it helps somebody out there, then great. Another reason is I live in the UK and I live in Lancashire and a lot of our venues or a lot of venues we visit are, let's just say, up some rather steep hills. It's fine on the motorway when you're traveling, it's nice and flat. The roads are usually nice and flat until you start getting towards your venues and you start climbing hills and climbing streets that get steeper and steeper. Now, I have delivered, um, I remember one particular journey. I actually couldn't believe how steep it was. I couldn't believe that there was a bus on this road. I was just looking at this bus, looking at, into the bus driver's eyes thinking, how do you do this for a job? This is an insane steep hill. But I went fishing in the kids' rooms. I don't know why, my kids are teenagers now. They don't own little toy cars anymore. Um, so I went looking, but I'd thrown them all away. So I went to B&M and bought myself a little matchbox car just to show you so you can visualize it. So these are our motorways and nice flat roads and your car is nice and flat on the road. And let's assume this little sharpener is our tiered cake. So we're just gonna put it on the roof <laughs> just because it's the flattest place on the car at the moment. So your road is flat, your car is flat and your cake is flat. Now, when I start getting to closer to those venues, the road starts to tilt. And I am not kidding when I say some of the roads are like this. Now, just trying to hold this so you can actually see it. But if the road is like that, and the car is like that, your cake is like that. Just look at the angle of that cake. Now, you'll know when you work with cakes, Cake makers know how fragile cakes are. They're the one that built them. Um, members of the public who come to collect, some of them are aware, um, and some of them, you can just tell, it's not gonna, go, gonna get home in one piece uh, by how they carry it. Some people just do not realize how fragile cakes can be. Um, so for me, having a cake in the boot at that angle is a no-no for me. Um, again, if you live somewhere nice and flat and all your venues are nice and flat, you've got a nice easy job. For me, I'm not, I'm not a fan of doing that with my cakes <laughs> on an angle. So exactly how do I do it? Now I have a secret weapon. His name is called Adam. <laughs> he is my husband. We have been together for as long as I've been making cakes pretty much. Um, so he's now well trained and well versed in how to drive a car with a very fragile 4 tier wedding cake on board. 
he does an amazing job and I know not everybody else has an Adam. Um, so this might be an impossible thing for you to bring in, but for me personally, Little Cherry Cake Company does not exist. It will never do deliveries without an Adam. It's just a personal thing. Um, I know a lot of you are lone rangers, you make your cake, you put it in your boot and off you go to the venue on your own. And that is how it is for a heck of a lot of cake makers. They have no other way. Um, so I do understand I have a major advantage here and not everybody can take advantage of it. But for me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing deliveries if I didn't have an Adam. There's just no way I'd be driving to a venue on my own with a cake in the boot. It's just not, it's just not a possibility for me. So he will sit in the front. Um, if the cake is small enough, if it's a single tier or a two tier, I will sit with it on my lap in the passenger seat. When it's a three tier or a four tier, I then move into the back seat because the height from the seat to the roof is slightly bigger in the back than it is the front because the front, can you see, has the arched, has like an arch window there. Um, and sometimes the box will not fit past that arch. So it's easier to get into the back where it's more open. And it also allows Adam to use his mirrors. <laughs> so I get in the back seat. Um, Adam will usually pass me the cake and it will either sit at the side of me on the seat if it's too tall, where I'm still able to hold it. But nine times out of 10, I will slowly maneuver that onto my knee and still have a little bit of wiggle room towards the roof. He knows not to set off from a junction too fast. He knows not to break too fast. Obviously we can't always help that, but he does the best he can. He goes around corners nice and slowly and he warns me if there's any speed bumps come in. A lot of venues have speed bumps, <laughs> which is not very helpful. So I will sit with it then on my knee for the entire duration of the journey. I hold the box underneath and the way I see it or what is common sense to me is that my jiggly thighs are extra suspension for the cake that's sitting on top of them. So the jigglier your thighs, the better. So this is our cake in the boot um, and the boot, oh, that's not a great start. The boot can jiggle up and down on the road, in the potholes. Um, you might have non-slip matting under the cake, so it's not going to move, but I feel this is how my stress cracks happened because the car is moving on the road and, you, and your cake is also having that impact in the boot. Me, with my jiggly thighs, and my hands underneath the box. I'm using my hands and my arms. And when we're moving, I am buffering that cake. It's not, it's a lot smoother when I'm jiggling up and down. The way I describe it to my customers who come to collect cakes is imagine you have a glass of water. You put that glass of water into a cup holder, open, and that water is just going to slosh everywhere in the car. You hold that glass of water. What is your instinct? What is your instinct if you have an open glass of water in the car? That is to move your hand and your arm up and down to contain the water in the cup without it sloshing. You just instinctively, especially when going round a corner, what do you do round a corner? You tilt so that the gravity and g-force pushing the other way around the corner, you can tilt your glass and the water is still in there because it's being held in there by the g-force of going around the corner. It's an instinct that we all kind of have. And I do the exact same thing with my cakes. When we go around a roundabout or go around a corner, I can feel the cake wanting to shift. I can feel the cake slowly getting heavier at one side. So I tilt my whole arm with the box. I literally tilt it like that, just like I would a glass of water. And I can feel the g-forces and I can feel how steady it is when I do that. And then when we go straight, I tilt the box back again. I know that sounds like a lot of effort, um, but to me, it's just natural. 
<laughs> and that just ensures that the cakes get there in one piece because like I said, I have a track record and every cake that I've taken on my knee has survived. The one that I placed in the boot had stress cracks. Now that's, that's enough for me not to want to try that again, but also the sheer amount of ones that you get online, on Instagram, on Facebook, where the pictures of cakes that have gone in the boot and I know cake makers have had this problem who go on their own and they've gone to the venue and they've put the cake in the boot and they've opened it and the cake is just crumbs. It's just crumbs in the back. I've seen that happen to the most competent bakers who know what they're doing. It's just one of those things when you're in the car, you hit a pothole, you slam on hard, you go round and round about a bit too hard and it can happen to the best of us. And that sends the fear of God into me because how am I going to fix that then when it's just crumbs in the back? So to avoid that at all costs, I put it on my knee. Then we find the venue, we pop the cake in the boot whilst we're parked up. The cake, the boot is a nice flat level surface, whereas the seats are obviously angled towards the back. So I prefer to put the cake in the boot where it's nice and flat. I will then go inside the venue to figure out where the cake is going because not all venues are just one building with a room in it. Sometimes they're like, oh, it's in our so-and-so suite, which is actually a separate building and some have even more separate buildings or it might be in a teepee down in the garden. So I go in first without the cake, ask where it's going um, if it's just a room off of where I've off the reception, then I will come back out to the car and carry it in. If for this instance, exactly what we shot on this video, it was actually in a different building or they said it would be easier to drive around the back of the building than carry it all the way through because it was such a long way. So we get back in the car, the cake goes back on my knee, we travel to where the doors are, round the back. Um, sometimes I will carry it in, sometimes Adam will carry it in. Um, Adam has been carrying them in more often, uh, just lately because the cakes have been a lot larger. It's not the weight of the cakes that bother me, it's I use my larger boxes. My larger boxes are 16 inch. I have tiny little T-Rex arms and I really struggle <laughs> to hold the 16 inch boxes um the smaller boxes i can fit the 13 inch boxes i can lift fine because i can get my hands good around the whole box i can get i can put the box on my arms and i'm good to go 16 inch i feel like i'm doing this and i'm really struggling to then hold the weight of what's in that 16 inch box just because my arms are so outstretched so adam has been helping me carry them in more a lot lately but he also likes to have a good nosy at the venues anyway. So we take it in, we find the cake table, we place the cake somewhere that isn't the cake table, if the cake table's quite small, and then I will carry it from the box and set it up. I check everything's all right. I take photographs. I have my little blue bag with me. This contains my large DSLR camera because you just never know if the photographer is going to get in touch with pictures of the day. Um, they very rarely do, I very rarely see pictures that the photographer has taken, so I take my big camera to make sure I have a copy. I also take pictures with my phone. This is usually like little videos for reels or Facebook, uh, Instagram stories. I also want to back up just in case my DSLR ones are a bit naff <laughs> because your phone camera will account for all the different types of lighting. Um, and I also take my vlog camera. If I'm vlogging that week, I will vlog the setup of the cake and then I film a little bit of its setup and its surroundings to then insert into the blog, into the vlog. So my little blue bag has all sorts of tech and gadgets in it. When I'm done, I leave my box there because it has the invoice on it with all the allergen and what to remove off the cake and all the instructions of how to store it and everything. That's all on the box and we leave. And when we get back out into the car, we do a little happy dance that I now no longer have to sit in the car with a cake on my knee and we come home. So 
yeah that is how i do it it doesn't matter if it's 30 minutes down the road it doesn't matter if it's five hours down the road i very very rarely put a cake in the boot the only time i do is if the cake tiers are separate for any reason which again in itself is a massive rarity i take all my cakes set up in one piece ready to go from box to table and it's done the main reason for this is because of how i design my cakes and it's pretty much impossible for me to build one on site because i build all my figures directly onto the ledges a lot of my cakes have figures on if they're just flowers and things like that you will see people building their cakes at the venue and popping flowers on if you know my cake designs well you know i don't do many of those um and mine really do have to be built in its entirety before we set off the only time i don't is if it's a semi-naked cake or a naked cake which i will then stack and build at the venue and i don't get many of those so i hope that answers some of your questions like you all think i am totally bonkers for doing it the way that i do and you your eyes nearly pop out of your head when you see me do it and there's just been so many questions and comments so i hope this explains and i hope you can kind of see why i do it that way um but to me it's something that just makes sense it makes sense that you wouldn't want your cake like that and to others it <laughs> they have to kind of see it before they understand it um but yeah i'm not here to get you to do it my way your way if your way works fine that's brilliant you carry on doing you but my most um cake fatalities happen when the customer comes to collect their own cake <laughs> so my that's when most of the fatalities will happen is they want to come and collect it themselves. they'll try and pop it in the footwell they tilt it to get it in and it's pretty much already damaged before they've set off i live on a hill i live on a very slight hill so that's not great for a start but yeah i do prefer to deliver them myself i know they're in safe hands but let me know what you think now that i've explained it and that you've seen it let me know if it makes sense to you or if you still think i'm bonkers like i said i know not everybody has the option to have a separate driver that takes you to your venue i am very very lucky in that aspect but again i wouldn't be offering deliveries if i didn't have him i think you guys out there that are doing it on your own and delivering it on your own i think you're very very brave it's something that would scare the heck out of me <laughs> but yeah i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope it's been informative and i hope that if you were struggling with cake deliveries and you maybe have had a fatality yourself it might give you some ideas of how you may want to progress in the future with your cake deliveries but thanks very much for watching and i'll see you again in the next one